sorry, Jeff. All right, Thank you. Well, first of all, <clears throat> I want to say to, um, to John Lewis, of others like him, Speak up. I want to say thank you to John Lewis and thousands of others like him, John, uh, who risked their lives so that one day I could stand at this podium. Yeah. I was born in an America where separate but equal was the law and where I never would have been able to obtain a seat in the U.S. Congress. Yes, yeah. But there were some people that fought tenaciously and sacrifice greatly life and limb yes like john lewis mm -hmm. so that one day and i think out of respect for their sacrifice and for their commitment to democracy we have a responsibility today at least i know i do so i want to say that first and foremost i know what i am a product of i'm a product of a broader history of struggle and of fighting than what I have done. I grew up with a hero, Roberto Clemente, who when he used to go and uh, be with the pirates, he had to, he couldn't be with the white baseball players. Mm. I grew in a certain neighborhood. That's different today. So I want to say thank you to everybody that's made the America a much greater place and has given me, I know a lot of us think we're just here because we're the best looking and the smartest and the most <laughs> articulate. <laughs> but you want to know something? You're smart. We're here because a lot of people give a lot of sacrifice. So I want to say thank you to yeah. all of them, first and foremost. Yeah. Secondly, I grew up in an era in which I had to deal with my own prejudice and my own bigotry that you grow up with. The person that says he doesn't have any is the person who should take a good look long in the mirror as he grows up. And so that brings me to why I want to words here today, because I got to tell you, what you guys have said today, what the members of the Democratic Caucus have said today, I have, it's been like an education that I have received sitting there, and I want to say thank you to each and every. I know that you might not feel that your words are powerful. They've been powerful to me. I will take them with me moving forward. Uh, they've been very, very powerful. And I want to thank you all. And so that's how you grew up. And so I remember waking up Sunday morning. I remember waking up Sunday morning, and it was Orlando. Yeah. And I started thinking of my nieces and my nephews and the nearly million Puerto Ricans that live between Orlando and Tampa. <coughs> and we started searching and making sure that all of our youngsters were safe. I had thought that somehow, you know, I could read in the newspapers and that happened to someone else. Yeah. And all of a sudden it really came so very, very close to me. Puerto Rico is a small island. We're not a large community. 23 of those that were murdered that day were Puerto Ricans. Mm. And it's almost as though my life and their life are interwoven. <clears throat> when I got to the Chicago City Council, the first vote I had to take a month there was on the gay rights ordinance. And I said, wow, the Cardinal was against it. Everybody was against it. It was 1986. And I said, oh, I, got, I got to vote for that. I just got there, Jan, right? I, all that fighting and struggle, winning by 21 votes, and now I got to take this vote. Well, I just want to share with everybody, I voted for the gay rights ordinance in 1986. Nice job, man. I was a Did they change the vote? I wasn't part of a caucus. I wasn't. I, I was just like I said. This is what I feel I have to do, because I have family members and neighbors and classmates, and I love them. And if I love them, I gotta stand up and protect them, regardless of the political consequences. And then I got here, and I remember going back over there with. I can see uh, Barney Frank there, and it's 1996, right? And there's Doma. Mm. And 60 some of us voted against it. 350 voted for DOMA, the Defense of Marriage Act. I remember, I remember going up to Frank and saying, can I get a few minutes? And he looked at me saying, I only got time for people who are against it. 
Assuming that being Puerto Rican Catholic and from the city of Chicago, I wouldn't be with him. Well, we spoke that day. You probably ask yourself, why am I? Because those kids were Puerto Rican. And most of them were gay. And they were having a wonderful time. Yeah. And I worked so hard. In America. I believe. I've worked and I've committed myself to dealing with my own demons, my own prejudices, things that were thrust upon me by those around me, right? And worked them out. And then I saw those kids die, murdered. And it was a hate crime, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. It was a hate crime that day. Do you know if he hated himself? Yeah. I don't know if he had his own internal demons of hatred, but there was hatred there. And he was showing that. And I fought so that the people could be loved, so that Puerto Ricans could be loved, so that black people could be loved. Because this is all about the same thing, isn't it? Because mm -hmm. this is really today we're standing up for people and their right not to be murdered by guns in this country. But we're also setting the stage to make sure that we all understand that black life that marriage equality matters, that the mother earth matters, that a woman's right to choose matters, and with the same commitment and the same dedication and the same tenacity that we fight today against gun violence, we're gonna stand up for women and gay people and the environment and workers in this country. This is a publicly tell you how much I love John Lewis and all of those that fought and how extremely grateful I am personally and for the Latino community in general how personally grateful we are that people gave up so I have a responsibility to stand up to speak because other people sacrificed so much to give me this right and this privilege thank you Good job.